Brooklyn's got the big scene. You know, every kid that plays guitar now coming out of Brooklyn or some sort of weird instrument that they made up um, is in a band these days. And right. they're coming out of Brooklyn, and there's all these millions of clubs in Brooklyn uh, now that are starting to get a rapport and a rep, and they're coming still to the Lower East Side, um, and I'm running around all the time going from, like, Crash Mansion, Bowery Ballroom, but there's never one distinct spot that can right. be a unified scene. Um, with that to date, now, was that any different? Because you had Max's back then, and you had CB's, and you had um, other places as well. Was it much more unified? Like, you obviously weren't going borough to borough all the time. You knew, all right, Friday night, I'm bored, I'm going to Lower East Side, let's see what's going on. Right. Um, do you ever think that'll happen again, to, especially in this time, in this era? Um, down there? Yeah, or anywhere. Anywhere? I mean, well, I don't know. Do you think it's like that in Brooklyn? Um, yeah, I mean, you know, Williamsburg's got, like, you know, it's they're, they're kind of spread out and they're all over the place, but they kind of keep to themselves. The only, the only place I go to, like, you know, kind of frequently is, is the trash bar. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because they usually you know people who hang out there and um, or bands that are playing there. If the, ba- the band's... Bands I know are playing anywhere is usually there. Mm-hmm. Um, but that's about the only. No, I don't know. I mean, if, you know, I hope it happens. Okay. Uh, you know, that would be, uh, I guess, like the third time it would happen in my life. Yeah. I'm, I mean, I, I was around in the '60s when the Beatles. Came, of course. You know? yeah. So I was there for the British invasion and you know that whole uh, thing and, um, and and then the punk uh, genre for and, you know that. And, I don't know it would be remarkable to see it happen a third time in my life, and uh, I, I would think it will. Yeah, I, I hope so. You know, and you know, you as a musician and someone that has seen all these scenes, as you were saying, um, if you can go back in time, um, if you can play with any musician at all, who would it be, and why? Well, for me, it would be Jimi Hendrix. And if, if and if I don't think there's Frank, any explanation either. Frank Zappa was around. <laughs> and the two that I'd be to, to be play with both of them. I mean, that would be uh, my dream. That'd be awesome. But yeah, I mean, because you know, nobody nobody could lick Jimi Hendrix's boots, as far as I'm concerned. And uh, you know, it would just be a never-ending learning process. Yeah, playing with somebody like that. Very very cool. So now, speaking of playing. Uh, especially with uh, in your bands, um, you know Joey may have had the Ramones family in success with the Ramones, but his last performance ever on stage what was you, was that's, with you. That's right. What what was we it like? Our, some of our first songs together and our last songs. Absolutely, yeah. you know everything came full circle it's on it. that point. Yeah. Um, and him closing his live career with you, his brother. What what you know? How do you cherish that? How do you hold on to that? Oh man, I just you know I, I'm just so glad that uh, that that happened. Um, and you know, glad that kind of he made the uh, the um, you know the gesture to uh, to, to make that happen because we you know we had we we'd been having our fights and um, then he approached me to come and uh, sing with him at uh, Manitoba to sing Happy Birthday to this other friend of his and then we just kind of uh, you know buried the hatchet and, and said let's just keep singing songs together and. Uh, and it was amazing, you know. But that was at a time where he was almost going to be considered in uh, going into remission mm-hmm. with cancer, you know. Oh, right. you yeah, right. You did read this part. So, uh, um, you know, it was just such a hopeful uh, time. Then I thought, you know, we were going to, we, we were finally going to get past all the stupid, you know, these stupid fights we had been having, and uh, you know, uh, starting to get off and start things off on the right foot. A new year, and um, and uh, you know, just just to be singing singing songs together again, like right. that, just in a in a you know such a casual setting. It wasn't a show with a continent, you know, or with a lot of people. There was just a just for the fuck of it, man. I mean, that was uh, you know, it made uh, it, it just when 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 I get really sad about things, I you know, I look to that and it just. Uh, it always never fails to make me feel good. That's awesome. Yeah. You know, it was you know as you were saying, you know, Joe, you and Joey were having like your petty fights. It seemed like, and um, you know, I know him and Johnny used to butt heads all the time. Uh, was he a confrontational guy? 
or mm. was it just you think it's demons that were at making him act this way, or was it celebrity? What you know, um, what caused a lot of the uh, the the fights? Well, I think you know between him and I, um, the f- the fact that he was not a confrontational guy, right, uh, kind of made it cause some of those fights because he didn't want to have to get into confrontations with John, right. So to avoid that. I guess he just, you know, kind of let me uh, down. All right, Andy. And, um, you know, that's that. I mean, the, 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 but those guys were all kind of confrontational with each other, too. But it was a very passive, aggressive confrontation. You know, they would just get guys to side up with each other and then uh, and, and have, make the other one feel left out. So it's not really confront- confronting somebody. Yeah, that's true. I mean, I guess it was, it's... You know, it's it's I guess uh, male aggression, if you will, just kind of you know fucking go along. Yeah. But it's interesting. It's interesting always to see how those guys lasted for as long as they did, especially having that passive aggressive uh, attitude. Right. Um, you know, do you ever think that they resented each other? Uh, yeah, I do. Very much so. Because I, you know, Joey made it obvious that he was always upset with Johnny. You know, KKK took my baby away. It's it's about the girl. Well, you know, it it's really not. Oh, I, it's not. No, I don't know. You might have skimmed over that part. All right. I did explain that in the book. Inter- okay. Um, Joey wrote that song while he was Linda was still living with him. Ah, uh, okay. So there's no way it could have been about him taking her away. That's okay. You know All right. what I mean? Um, what it's really about. Is uh, is when we were a teenager. Uh, well, actually, Joe was about 21. I don't know if you read the part where he uh, admitted himself into St. Vincent's psychiatric, yeah. right? He met this girl there, a black girl. I don't know if you read this part. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. And um, that's where her, her parents were, uh, even though they were black, they were very opposed to mixed, uh, ra- you know, rela- uh, racial, mixed, mixed couples. Okay. And we jokingly used to refer to them as the the KKK because uh, they did not want their daughter hanging out with a white guy, just almost like you know, like the clans. You know, they were totally course. against the mixing of the races. You know, so we would refer to them as the KKK. And, uh, and one time, um, my mom went to Europe, and I was away, and she drank all the liquor in the house. And uh, when my mom got back, she called her parents, and they came and got her. And then I came right. home and I said, "Where's uh, Where's Wilna?" And he said, "They took her away." I said, "Who?" He said, "The KKK." Okay. And that's kind. Of, and I guess he didn't forget that, but uh, it was not he, about. Uh, well, yeah. Well, the thing is, like the the I guess the urban legend, if you will, was right. always about the girl. You know, it does get clarified in the book. Um, it does. Trying to you know exp- again for the, those that haven't um, picked it up yet, but right. uh, yeah. oh wow, all right. I mean, if you want to let them find that out for themselves. It's yeah, 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 sure. All right, yeah, I'll you figure know. out how it goes in the editing room. But it, it's always funny to me. Uh, it is, you know, because uh, for so long, um, you know, you even talk to most rock and roll historians, they'll tell you the first story that, you know, everyone believes. Right. Is that, uh, you know, oh, Johnny took the girl away from Joey. And that's, right. You know. But if you really... If, if that's the story. If you choose to research it and get into the chronology of things... She was still. She was still living with him when it, when that album came out. Right, right, right. You know, so obviously it was. Yeah, couldn't have been about it. No, <laughs> you know, unless uh, Joey was looking at a crystal ball or something, you know. <laughs>